Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we have kind of a hodgepodge of different products that we're going to be talking about. So this is going to be an updates video. So if I feel like there's some products that I might have reviewed in the last few weeks that I want to give you an update on, I'm going to talk about those. I'm also going to talk about mini makeup reviews of products that I've just been trying out off camera and finally coming back and giving you guys my thoughts and also of course just talking about products that I feel like didn't get enough screen time that I do kind of want to finalize my thoughts with you on. So we have a lot of new makeup items, some new-ish, some a little bit older but newer to me. So if you want to just sit down and talk makeup and see what products I use to get this look because every single product I'm wearing is in this video, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So that's why I do this video, to um, share my thoughts with you guys. So I'm gonna take you along to the routine I did to get this look, as well as a few other products that didn't fit on my face. But we're gonna start off with skincare. I only have one skincare item that I wanted to share with you. So this is the Good Molecules Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. I love this and wake up eye gel yes I love it I especially would recommend keeping this in a cooler place like if you have a cooler room or even a lovely skincare fridge like the one that I have it will wake up your eyes there's something about this formula where it stays cool on its own but if you can give it kind of a little bit of a push it'll be even more awakening I love this because it's really lightweight I'm very very picky about my eye creams because if an eye cream is too thick it will give me milia around my eye area and I feel like this doesn't do that it's the perfect pre makeup eye cream because it's so light it wakes me up in the morning because of the cooling sensation that it has and it's just perfect for helping your concealer not get so dry and crepey as the day goes on. So it's a really great prepping step for the under eyes before makeup and I love it and the best part is Good Molecules is such an affordable skincare brand and they have very great ingredients. So this is one of their newer products. I did receive it in PR but I'm loving it. Now we're going to move on to face primers. I have two to speak about today. So the first one is from Vesca Beauty. They were kind enough to send me a PR package a few weeks back and I'm slowly but surely been testing more and more of their products and I finally got into the Soft Sun Radiant Skin Primer and Luminizer and a lot of you guys also seem very interested in this brand and I am all for this brand. They are so inclusive. Their products seem to be just very clean and they're simple products and just go check out their website. The whole aesthetic, I'm like, yes, fast. I really see this brand rising in popularity. So I've been trying this out and it's very, very interesting. It's almost like a highlighter, but a very, very natural highlighter to where it's natural enough to use it as a primer. I don't find it to be very, very moisturizing and it is a little bit too shiny for me than normally what I'd prefer as a base. So I really only like to apply it on the high points of my face and you can see the very slight pinky tone that it has. So I have mine in the shade First Blush. And at first I was just expecting this to be like a glowy base. But once I saw when I applied it, it really is quite pink. And I almost wish I would apply this over foundation as opposed to under so that the pink will show through. Because when you put foundation on top of the pinky color, it kind of goes away. But this has been really, really nice. I've been enjoying playing with it. There's some characteristics of it that do remind me of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless filter but this is a little bit more metallic and it has a different texture but I think the use is very similar how you would use it. The next primer that I have I've been talking about but I did just want to finalize my thoughts in this video for you guys is the Gucci Silk Priming Serum. This is very expensive so I wanted to make sure I did thoroughly test it out for you guys to tell you guys whether or not it's worth it and I like it a lot. I've been using it a lot lately and I don't use this when my skin is drier because it's not a super moisturizing primer. I do feel like I need to prep my skin before I use this but it's a very smoothing primer. So on days where I apply a thicker moisturizer before makeup then I will use this because this does lightly moisturize but it also leaves my skin feeling very smooth. I don't know that it makes any difference at the end of the day but I love the way that it feels. So I wouldn't say you need to run out and get this, but if you can get it on sale, I really have been enjoying it and it's just, it's stunning. 
And then of course I did also have to update you on the natural finish fluid foundation also from Gucci. It's been a roller coaster ride with this foundation. Literally, this these are the experiences I've had with this foundation. I'm not happy that Gucci wouldn't let me return this shade because their shade matching system was awful, but that aside, at the end of the day, I don't like this foundation. I just recently reviewed the Guerlain Lycentral High Perfection Foundation, and I feel like this is what this was supposed to be, but the Guerlain did it so much better. So if you're looking for a new luxury foundation that has more of a natural matte finish that is long wear, I would steer you in the way of the Guerlain because this does not wear well at all. I feel like within a few hours, I look like a cake face. I mean, I've had some days where I liked it, and I've had more days where I haven't liked it. When I do like this foundation, it's because I've mixed it with other foundations that I like. If you have dry skin, this is not, not gonna look good on you at all. Yeah, no, this is only good really when I mix it with my ABH foundation. I feel like this foundation counteracts all that is bad with this foundation because it's so glowy and moisturizing, whereas this, it emphasizes dry patches that I literally didn't know existed. So, no. <laughs> not worth it. Another foundation, unfortunately, that I have to trash, and this is quite a hyped up foundation, is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. NARS foundations are hit or miss for me. Sometimes I love a NARS foundation, and then other re releases that they do, I'm just like, no. And I've tried every which way to apply this. I've seen so many people say, you have to work with it, you have to play with it. Why do I have to work with this foundation and try it 20 times in order to make... I'm not popular. I don't know what, what is what is happening. For real, now I don't even remember what I was talking about. I don't know what I was saying, but basically I saw everybody saying you needed to apply it in different ways and that should not be the case. It really shouldn't. And I did. I tried to make it work. I listened to you all and I look so dry. This is so matte. I know it's a soft matte foundation, but nothing about it looks skin-like to me. I've tried my fingers, I've tried a sponge. Again, this is one where I have to mix with other foundations to make work, and I just, I don't like it. The first time I tried it, I was like, okay. I give it the benefit of the doubt, but now that I've had it longer, I don't like it. But it's, it's, it's quite trendy. A lot of people really like this foundation. I don't like it. I don't like it. And NARS has some good stuff, but I don't like it. Lastly, as far as foundations go, we have the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. Now, I did do a full dedicated wear test on this, but of course, I do like to give foundations a lot of wear tests before I give my final, final opinion, just because things change, feelings change, people change too. No, <laughs> things change, bases change, your skin changes, the condition of your skin is always different. I'm wearing it right now, and it's it looks really, really good. I don't think it's the best, most long-wearing product, but if you're looking for a nice, solid skin product from the drugstore, I do like it. Though, e.l.f. is getting quite pricey from what they used to be. It gives a nice, natural, matte finish. It gives a light to medium coverage, and it's just one of those things where it works. It doesn't knock my socks off, but I'm never disappointed with my makeup when I wear this. So if I feel like wearing a drugstore face, see, I'm weird. Like, I will be like, I'm wearing drugstore makeup today and I'll feel good all day in my drugstore makeup. But if I want to do a drugstore face, I do enjoy this kind of for an everyday drugstore makeup face. On the contrary, however, I just placed this along with the e.l.f. Camo Concealer Order. This is the Flawless Brightening Concealer. I hadn't really heard anybody talk about this, but the website said it was new at the time. And I have mentioned this a couple of times on my channel, but I just, I wanted to talk about it one more time to let you know in case you missed those videos that I do not like this either. Why am I so negative this video? I don't know. But I'm wearing this concealer now and I just feel like I'm not wearing concealer. I'm not a fan of this old school push-up brush kind of packaging it reminds me of like my dance recitals when I was little I used to put on lip glosses like this but it just disappears on my skin I feel like it and it like makes my eyes look dry but also without concealer so no the only time I would really recommend this is if you have like a 12 year old daughter who wants to get into wearing makeup give her this because it won't look like she's wearing anything <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the Tower 28 Bronzino Best Coast. Oh wait, wrong one. 
wait, no, okay, yes. So I've talked quite a lot about the first color that I ever tried was West Coast, which a quick update, I don't quite love this anymore. It's a little bit too metallic of a finish for me on the skin and a bit too light, but they did send over a PR package that had Best Coast, and I did hear that many people liked Best Coast. <sighs> my, my opinions on this product in general have changed. I like the consistency, I like the way the product applies, but I don't really like the colors nor the metallic finish because I feel like, first of all, West Coast has like a gold shift to it, which isn't very flattering. Best Coast for me is a little bit too red. So if you like a little bit of redness, you might like this. So I would say red undertoned bronzers look really good if you live in a hot place because the red kind of sunburnt look is a look and it matches with your skin. There is not a bit of sun right now in Maryland, so this just looks red. I look sunburnt in a not very good way. So Best Coast wasn't my favorite color. The formula is good, but I don't like the color. I'm wearing it right now, and you can tell no difference between the blush and the bronzer. This is the bronzer. It's very, very, very warm. Moving on to the blush, we have the e.l.f. Putty Blush. A lot of e.l.f. in this video because I placed that whole order. And I don't even know the color because they don't have the color on this. And this is a big giant okay for me. Like it's really, really good for the price. I have a lot of cream products in this video, which I've been hating cream products just because of the mask situation. I don't like a cream product with a mask over top. I'm picky about how I apply this. I feel like if I use my finger or a sponge, it does have the tendency to kind of lift the foundation underneath. But when I use a brush, I used a BK Beauty, I believe it is a 106 to apply it today. I like it a lot, lot more. I think it wears pretty well and it has a pretty natural finish to it. It's not too bright or anything. So I like it. I don't think it's anything earth shattering, but for a few bucks, if you're looking to get into a nice cream blush, I would recommend it. But just know it's not amazing, you know? Okay, now this product to me is amazing. I have like three cream blushes, so be prepared. So the first formula, well, I guess the second because we just have the e.l.f., but we have the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blushes. So they sent this to me in a PR package, but I was really excited because I wanted to buy these anyway. So I don't know if these are all of the colors, but my favorite color, if you're gonna get one, is Nude Kiss because the rest of the colors are a bit too bright for me. And I like a bright blush, but for whatever reason, like look at these, like th they're a bit wild. So if you want something a little bit more wearable, I do recommend this. I really like this product. It is a bit glossy, so just be prepared for that. But overall, the finish is really beautiful on the cheek. I prefer to apply my cream products with a sponge and this just spreads it out so beautifully. It wears beautifully. It doesn't have a big dry down, which I don't necessarily love, but I just love the color. I love the finish on the cheek. I love how it applies and how it blends. So if you are looking for a really good cream blush from the drugstore, I do recommend the Milani over the e.l.f. The e.l.f. is a bit more mattifying. It's not completely matte, but this one does really give you a nice, juicy, flushed, glowy cheek, and I love it. I highly recommend it. Oh, side note, and they're made in Korea. A lot of these beautiful cheek products are made in Korea, and it's always great when a drugstore brand sources from like Korea. I just got some things from Revlon that were sourced from Italy. That excites me. So and now we have more of a higher end product and this came out in a collection of three different formulas. So this is the Rare Beauty Melting Blush. I only picked up the shade Nearly Neutral. I do have a whole review if you are interested in more details in these products. I love the eyeshadow, I love the lips, but I did want to come back here to update you guys. I do not like this blush. What I said in my review is true, this blush just disappears. It feels really cool. It does melt when you touch it, but it's too, too sheer and then it goes away within five minutes of wear. So if I were you, I would just pick up the liquid shadow. I think that's my favorite and use that as blush. But this, I put it on and I'm like, where did it go? It's, it's a waste of a product for me. All right, now we are moving on to eyes. I did have a lot of face and complexion products to talk about. So I don't have any eyeshadow palettes that I'm talking about because I talk about eyeshadows so much that they always get a bunch of videos. So these products don't. So I have an eye tapper and this is from Pop Beauty. It's called a Flash Shadow and I have the shade Crushed Copper. This is what is on my eyelids and it looks really good from afar. It doesn't look that good up close. To be fair, 
I really liked this product when I had shadows underneath and I used this to top off the look. It was a nice glitter topper. And today, since I didn't use an eyeshadow palette, I just applied this all over. Don't recommend using this alone. It's a little bit more sheer. My eyes look patchy. And I don't know if you can see, but they are crepey all over. I just, not pretty on its own. So if you plan on using this on its own, I don't recommend it. But if you are looking for an affordable, cheap glitter to put on the eye, it definitely does its job. But don't wear it alone. But it's, it's okay. <laughs> the next product is not okay. This is from Ofra. And I don't even know what this is called, but this is their liquid shadow. I got it on Octoly a while back. And this is in the shade Do Not Disturb. Now, I don't want to talk about the product as a whole. I don't want to make assumptions because this is a very hard color to have in a liquid shadow. But man, if I was them, I wouldn't, <laughs> I just wouldn't have released this color. Patch City. I had to layer this like 20 times to make it okay. It's just too dark of a color. Like I said, I just wouldn't have released it. I don't want to knock Ofra for this because I'm sure the other colors are fine, but this color was not good. You had Patch City, Patch Patch City. All right, I have two mascaras to share with you guys. We'll start off with the one that I'm currently wearing. If you've been reading the description box in my videos, this is all I've been wearing. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes. Now this is an interesting mascara because it has like two flat sides. Do you see the flat sides and then there's only spikes on half of it? I understand you guys have told me what it's for. The flat sides to build. The spiky side is to brush your whatever, separate your lashes. I really like the mascara. I hate the wand. But I feel like this is what I have on my lower lashes, and I don't have very long lower lashes, so pretty, pretty good. And it's quite a thickening mascara, which I really like. It does add some length. It's not the most lengthening mascara that I've ever used, but overall, it, it does make my lashes look a little bit fat. And I like that. So I've been enjoying this. I don't think it's a mascara that I would repurchase, but it's one that I've happily been grabbing for. And then we have the trendy and viral Babeline Sky High Mascara. If you aren't on TikTok or you're not a makeup TikTok, believe it or not, I'm not on makeup TikTok. I don't watch makeup videos, but I did just post my first real TikTok video because I've been putting some of my Instagram reels on there, but I actually made it a dedicated TikTok video. So I'm new on there. You guys can follow me or whatever. But I did hear that this was a trendy viral mascara. All of these people were having amazing transformations. That did not happen with me. <laughs> but to be fair, I have very short thin lashes and I will say this is a very lengthy mascara but I do also require a little bit of thickness to my lashes some volume this does not give it to me so I just look like I have really frail long lashes and it's really not a cute look and this mascara is so hard to get off I don't know why I can't get this off my eyes so I'm not impressed I'm sorry but if you really like length this will be great for you I have some false lashes that I've really been enjoying. I feel like I've been trash talking a lot of products, but let's um let's do something positive here. So Ardell, which oh my goodness, me being on Ardell's PR list has been a godsend because I run through lashes like water. They had sent me a collection that was called the 3D Foam Ink. It has gray packaging. Make sure you look for the word 3D because they have a lot of versions of foam ink. But this lash collection looks expensive on the eyes, but it's quite an affordable product. Ardell, I feel like, comes out with so many collections left and right, and then all of them have the same names. But if you get them in this packaging, really beautiful. So I'm wearing the Style 858, and I mean, don't these look expensive? And they have a nice curl to them. I prefer a lash that has a curl up. You see, because I have smaller eyes and I just feel like that opens up the eyes. I love these. I love these. I love these. Ardell is one of my favorite lash brands. Even though I love a good expensive lash, if I'm looking for something that looks expensive but isn't expensive, I love me some Ardell. All right, now we're finally moving on to lips. I have quite a few lip products. So first, I got this in a PR package months, 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 months ago. But I wanted to talk about it because I don't buy it. <laughs> this is the Enos Free My Lip Balm in Very Berry Tea. 
this doesn't feel moisturizing to me at all. It almost feels drying. And this is tinted, which is fine. It has quite a strong tint, but it's almost too tinted to where I feel like I'll put it on and it'll end up all over my face and it'll look like I ate a popsicle, like a three-year-old, you know, when you eat a lollipop and you have a ring. It's not, no, I don't like that. <laughs> not a lip balm I would recommend. And then I also have these Milani Color Fetish Lip Shines. I have a lot more. I have a whole... Oh, you can't see the drawer, but they sent me the whole collection, and if you are interested in seeing more colors, check out my Instagram. There's an IG reel that I posted trying on every single color, and the collection is beautiful. We do have brighter colors, but all of them surprisingly looked really good on me. Um, so, <laughs> I have my two favorite, the ones that I've been wearing the most, which of course are the most, most neutral. So I have Lustful right here, and then a little bit more of a deepy, vampy one that I've been wearing is Tied Up, and I really enjoy these. So it seems to me that these lip shines, these lip balms that are very colored in a lipstick form are quite popular. This is a great way to follow that trend but not spend a ton of money. I will say you do need to have something underneath, whether it's a liquid lipstick or a lip liner, because these will get all over your face. They are shiny, but they will not stick to your lips. You need to give them something to stick to but if you're looking for that shiny lip balm kind of product these do have quite a lot of color but it's a one-stop shop as far as both color and shine so I highly highly recommend these just be a little bit on the more careful side less is more with this product if you keep building it building it and building it up layer after layer it's gonna end up on your chin we also have the Maybelline Superstay 24 color this is quite old this came out with their coffee collection and nobody has talked about these and the reason why I wanted to bring these to your attention because another TikTok trend are those double-sided NYX lip colors and basically you put the matte lipstick down and then you put the gloss down and it's supposed to not go anywhere but apparently those have been really hard to find and I think this is like the same thing you would put the Maybelline of course, it's Maybelline Duh, but you'll put the liquid lipstick on, and this is what I'm wearing right now. And I have the shade Caramel Crush. The liquid lipstick's a little bit drying, but then you have the lip balm part to put it right on top, and it's true. You put the matte liquid lipstick on, and then you put this over top, and it doesn't even really transfer onto the lip balm part. It's very long-lasting, and it is more moisturizing when you put the balm on top, which, by the way, this concept isn't new. I know Chanel's had a product like that for a very long time. I remember my mom having a product like that so long ago but anyways chanel did it first i'm just saying but it's a really cool product it's really comfortable and this particular color caramel crush is super cute i have some tower 28 lip glosses to talk about i picked these up at the last sephora vib sale i don't think i really ever updated you guys so i picked up two colors the first shade is oat which is the lighter one and then we have cashew and these are a really great everyday gloss now do they top my favorite gloss formulas like pat mcgrath and fenty no but they're really great to keep in the purse because they aren't very pigmented and they're very watery which normally I wouldn't like but as far as an everyday gloss it's nice to just kind of pop on it doesn't last a very long time it's not overly shiny it feels very thin and comfortable on the lips so I, I like Fenty and I like Pat because they're a little bit thicker they have some some texture to them this is not the case literally it's like a watery but in a good way with a pretty gloss it's quite moisturizing I love I love the shine do I recommend you pick up every color no you don't need every color but I've been enjoying these I don't love love them but they have their purpose they have their place in my collection okay final gloss that I want to talk about just to kind of give you my thoughts because these were trending for quite a while and I didn't jump on the bandwagon until a few weeks ago um, when they sent me a PR package and it's these lifter glosses and I've said my thoughts on these before but this is a video where I'm gonna finalize those thoughts they are not they are not dupes for Fenty, if we're talking exact dupes. Now, if you want the same look, same vibe, yes, they're dupes in that sense, but they don't last as long as the Fenty. They look good, 
they're not as juicy and they don't last as long as the Fenty but as far as just being a gloss they are a really great gloss I love the packaging and they're very very comfortable they come in very beautiful colors one of my favorites is reef this one has a little bit more pigmentation to it but shades like moon are a little bit more light and pretty so they have different kind of finishes different formulas but it is a beautiful gloss formula especially from the drugstore it is Probably the first gloss that I would recommend you pick up from the drugstore if you're going to look for a gloss from the drugstore. Really, really great formula. But I did want to crack the myth. I don't think they're a dupe for Fenty. Same vibe, but Fenty does it better. Okay. <laughs> Alright, you guys. That is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed just sitting down talking about makeup. A lot of negative things in this video. I had a full day of work today, so I guess I'm just kidding. <laughs> I must not have been in a good mood. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.